All right, let's talk about merging. The first concept we need to discuss though is transparency. Nuke handles transparency a little bit different than other applications that deal with images. Nuke is explicit in its handling, which means that if an image doesn't have an alpha, either because it didn't come with one or because the format doesn't support an alpha, Nuke won't display an alpha or operate on it like it does. You can actually see that in the viewer and in your node graph. If you look at the bottom left corner of your read nodes, it'll actually show you which channels are present on that read node. This is really useful when you initially bring files in and you need to do some management of the alpha channels ahead of time, because now you know that there's information here or there's not information there, which is actually more important usually. You can also see that in the channel menu here, and you can toggle through these, and I'm just gonna use the hotkeys. So you can see when we flip over into our alpha, there is no alpha, which is expected because this file has no alpha present. Now, there are a few different ways that images come in, and some formats have different alpha handling properties. So JPEG is a really good example. If you're using JPEGs, they don't have an alpha channel. JPEG physically doesn't support it. Um, EXR does have an alpha channel if it was rendered. A lot of times you'll actually see EXRs with no alpha channel. DPX doesn't support it natively. There are some hacks where, you know, using Nuke and using some other tools, you might can get a DPX with an alpha channel, but it's actual format settings. It doesn't support an alpha natively. Movies are the same way. Some movies, the majority of movies don't support an alpha channel, but then there are some like uh, ProRes Quad 4 that do support alpha channels natively. So you always wanna be aware of exactly what your transparency is on your read nodes. The reason for that is Nuke, the way it does its merge operations, every single merge operation is using the alpha channel to help figure out what that operation is gonna do. So, and I, we'll get into this a little bit later and I'll show examples of where not having an alpha drastically changes the way that the merge operations come together. But I just wanted to talk in generalities about transparency and make sure that everyone is aware that that is a big thing and the way that Nuke handles it is not the traditional way of other applications. Something else you'll see, so in this case we have an image, you know, most images will actually come in with no alpha. So you'll have red, green, and blue, no alpha. Occasionally you'll see an image like this where it'll come in and it'll have all three channels plus an alpha. Other times you'll see images, you'll receive image sequences that are just the alpha. Now that, that baked alpha might not actually live in the alpha channel. You'll see a lot of map passes come in as PNG or JPEG and they have no alpha channel. You know, the alpha is actually an RGB. So that takes us to our next point and that's pre-multiplication and unpremultiplication. Pre-multiplication is basically taking the alpha channel and multiplying it times the RGB channels. So in this case, we have an image. This is an unpremultiplied image. And what that means is it has a full RGB, but if we look at the alpha, the alpha and the RGB don't match. You can see we have a lot more image information outside of the alpha channel. A pre-multiplied image is where that alpha has been multiplied against the image, and it looks something like this. So you can see here we have transparency everywhere where there isn't a solid alpha. So this is a pre-multiplied image, and this is actually my preferred method. Usually if you have an unpremultiplied image, I like to pre-mult them out so that we can actually see exactly what they are. There are times, especially when you're working with keys and other things that might have some noise or chatter, where working unpremultiplied can cause some issues later down the road because you're bringing in things that you didn't see, but when when the merge operation or whatever other tools you're using operate on the alpha channel, they're, they're working on image that you don't know is there. So let's talk about working with the alpha now. There are a few different ways to work with it and something that we always need to do when we bring read nodes in is manage them so that we know exactly what they are and that they're working the way we expect them to work. So in this more traditional case where our file has no alpha baked in, we want to supply that alpha. There's a couple ways to do it. The first is open its properties. There's an auto alpha button. As soon as you click that, and you can actually see our viewer updated to now have four channels. So now it has RGB and A. So you can tick that box and that will now give that image a solid alpha. While very easy and clean to do, 
I actually prefer to do this explicitly. The reason for this is if you were to change this note, read node later, say there was a problem rendering and they needed to re-render the file and you had to load it in sep again or swap it with another take, something like that, often that auto alpha box gets neglected and you forget to check it again. And then later when something's not working appropriately and you work your way all the way back through your script, you'll discover, oh, I don't have an alpha channel here. So what I like to do is use the shuffle node. You can pull that up via the tab menu. Shuffle basically is what it says. It lets you take one channel and move it to another channel. It also has some features where it'll let you black out channels or make them solid. In this case, we're actually gonna make the alpha channel solid white. So what we'll do is we'll find our alpha row. We'll tick the white checkbox here and this will now give us a white solid alpha. So whenever I'm comping, this is the first thing I do just by default. You know, even if a, sh a clip comes in with an alpha, I'll go ahead and put a shuffle on it. I'll make the alpha white, and that way I don't have to worry about merge operations down the line becoming a problem. You know, even on an image like this, where we have an alpha already baked in, I've seen it happen many times where the initial scan came in the initial pulls came in, it had an alpha, they needed to re-deliver scans for whatever reason, and when they re-rendered it, a different technician rendered it, and it came back with no alpha. So if you didn't shuffle the alpha white after the read node, it would drastically affect how your comp looked at the end of the comp. So I'll do the same thing here. I'll just add a shuffle, click the white button, and now we know that alpha is solid white and that won't change if our read changes for some reason. The next thing we see somewhat regularly, and this is more of a CG thing than it is with actual shot footage, we have an unpremultiplied image come in. So we have our full RGB, but we want to work with it pre-multiplied. So there are a couple ways to get there. And in this case, we can simply use a pre-mult tool. And what that does, if you open it up, it says multiply and it's the channels you want to multiply by the alpha or other channel you want to multiply by. So in this case, we're taking our RGB and we're multiplying it times our alpha. The end result is now an image that is only visible where there's alpha. In this case, you know, we have the image, but sometimes we have a setup where we have an image with no alpha and then we have a separate image sequence supplying an alpha. So there's a couple ways to actually operate with that. For me, I like to use specific merge operations and we'll cover those a little bit more, but in this case, we're gonna use a mask. So we'll actually use a merge node. We'll connect that to our alpha only file. So this is something that was rendered out and it only has an alpha. We'll change our merge operation to mask. And now you'll see we don't have the expected result here. This is for a couple reasons. A, if you look here, we don't actually have an alpha channel on either of these clips. So what we need to do is we need to A, give our main footage a solid alpha. So now that has a solid alpha. But you can see we're still not seeing what we expect here. You know, we have our mats plugged in, they're plugged in correctly, but you'll notice we don't have an alpha. So what happened here is this mat was actually rendered into just RGB space and not into the alpha. And again, you'll see this a lot with JPEG sequences. So we need to move this RGB channel over into the alpha channel. So we again use the shuffle tool. This time we're gonna use it a little differently. So we're gonna just take our red channel here, click and drag over to the alpha output. And what that does is move the red channel into the alpha channel. Now, if we go back to our mask, you'll see that we're now cutting out our image with that alpha. And if you flip through them, you'll see we have both alpha and image there. The next thing we'll, we do, and this is, you know, just so you know, but again, not really a regular thing. Say we have our image that has no alpha and say we have an alpha render that we want to combine, but we don't want to pre-multiply them together. And there's a few times that this might be the case, but I'm just going to show you for academic purposes. So in this case, we would actually use a different tool called copy. Copy allows you to literally copy a channel from one tool, from one node to another node. So in this case, we have our B input put on our alpha, our A or on our original image, and our B, our A input goes to our alpha only. 
So you can see this errors out and it says we're missing a channel. It's expecting an alpha. And if you actually look at the settings, it's expecting to use the alpha channel in the RGBA layer. So because neither of these have an alpha, it's the same issue. We want to set up a shuffle, add our alpha. You can see we're still having an error. Now that's because this is still expecting an alpha channel here. Here we can do this two ways. We can either set a different channel to be copied. Oops, the wrong way there. So we want that to be red and we want this to be alpha. Or we can add a shuffle and do the same thing we did here. We'll just copy this shuffle and put it there. And now we can leave that tool set up as it's de in its default state. And again, if something changes on your read nodes, it's really good to explicitly build that alpha management structure out. All right, that's all we have for this section.